Uh, next, uh, one of my one of my best friends in the world, Mr. Phil Brown, who's one of the originators of Mash and works works very very hard and. Uh, uh, all kinds of uh, interesting, exciting things happening in his life recently. Let's hear for Mr. Phil Powell. Better press the bus and have not. <laughs> okay, uh, so it's, thank you, Steve. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here today. I'd like to share some adventures that I had while being a volunteer teacher on Peace Boat for three and a half months. Three themes that emerge are connections. Uh, challenges and collaboration. Uh, I think that when people embark on a voyage or indeed when students begin a term or semester, then you get some students who, and some people who feel a little bit afraid of what's lying ahead, and other people that have that enthusiasm, that sense of adventure, and that excitement. Um, and if you can get everyone on board to share that and feel that, that makes for a wonderful journey. Um, before I got on Peace Boat, this is one of the connections that I made uh, complete by chance. I was with Colin at Cotessel, waiting for an elevator and bumped into Kit Cakes. And he's one of these people that supports uh, Peace Boat, um, Giles Asian Youth Forum, and encourages people to really follow their dreams and to make them that much bigger, um, especially by dealing with other people. Um, first of call, um, I met Wiley. I was looking for a, a bus to go to the museum. I saw this guy, he just gets off the bus, comes up to me and says, are you looking for the museum? And I said, yeah. And he then took me to the museum and we spent the day together. It just made everybody smile everywhere. That's really quite amazing. Uh, one of the greatest rewards of being on Peace Boat is that you get the chance to work with a lot of grassroots local organizations, very much for people to people, um, such as Global Village, which are focused on improving education and health in Vietnam. The founder of Global Village is Lady Hayslip, who is pictured in the middle. Uh, she was a survivor of uh, the Vietnam War. She was actually persecuted, raped, and tortured. Um, but she talked about how the power of forgiveness was really important in helping her overcome her ordeals. And one day over breakfast, she asked uh, me and a friend of mine, so what's the difference between love, uh, sorry, between intelligence and wisdom? That was a good conversation. Uh, <laughs> the uh, other thing is, um, these both projects enable us to reach out to certain places in the world that might not otherwise get support, uh, such as Eritrea. Uh, this is peaceful. Okay. On Peaceboat, one of the things that I got the opportunity to do was to put into practice some of the things I've been learning on my MA Tech and Tassel, uh, such as introducing and negotiating curriculum. So everything that I kind of read and learnt about, I had a chance to actually go over and play with. And I think that was a really rewarding part. And thanks to all the people here, um, Alison and Kay, then I've got a chance to maybe share this further. Um, and <coughs> somebody talked about this earlier, actually. Jennifer, this morning. Jennifer. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, the different things that you learn from going to different countries. Uh, one of the things that I remember from going to uh, Kenya was how in African traditions, they don't necessarily have this idea of people performing, of people with an audience. Everything is participatory. And so, for example, they have the idea of drum circles. Everybody becomes, joins in with the drumming, joins in with the dancing. And they don't have this kind of breakdown between them and the nuns watching. And uh, this led to drum circles on the boat. Um, eventually we had a workshop with an audience, but the audience of 50 people ended up drumming and filling the whole boat up with drum noises that the ship's captain told us about later. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the opportunities on Peace Boat really encourage everybody to really push their boundaries, to try things new with the feeling that it's all right. It doesn't matter if you make mistakes. It doesn't matter if you feel embarrassed or ashamed about something you're going to have a chance to do that and get over it. And that leads to more opportunities and expansion of your own world. And Kim Chahey, he's uh, actually he's a world champion uh, performer. And as well as talking about serious issues like Zainichi in Japan, his panic art performance had that philosophy of he'll make a mistake and he'll try the trick again. And he'll do it three times until he then moves on. 
And he inspired this junior high school kid, one of the youngest passengers on the boat, to take up juggling. And one day I was walking around Croatia and I saw him juggling and people were throwing money in. And he'd only started juggling a couple of weeks before that. <laughs> <laughs> and a couple of weeks later he was running his own workshop and teaching other people on the boat how to juggle. Um, there are this what it's kind of described as a floating university and there are guest speakers, international students and so on and they come from all parts of the world. Students here came from Serbia, Croatia, Palestine and Israel. Um, so you can imagine the kind of things they talked about there. With collaboration on Peace Boat, one of the phenomenal things about Peace Boat is that most of the events aren't organized by Peace Boat or by the crew. Most of the events are created by the passengers, so every voyage is unique. Um, so, what was I going to say about this one? <laughs> yeah, I don't think Patricia realised that when she was trying to teach me salsa steps a few months beforehand, this was quite how I was going to put things into practice. And I think that's the same with a lot of our learning. We don't know when our learners are going to use what we we'll try to share with them. So, uh, 104 days later, uh, 24th of call, and I was back in Japan. I think one of the things that really amazed me was when people say goodbye, just never seen 600 people cry on the mass. <laughs> and John Spirry, who I met later, um, shows that the connections just continue to go beyond. He approached me one day and said, oh, if he's really interested in this book, could I write a piece that he could put in his book that he was making? And of course I was delighted. Uh, it was an opportunity to share, get the word out about his book, get students interested, and just support everybody in a nice way. And so back to Lady's Hayslip's question about what's the difference between uh, wisdom and intelligence. After talking about things, we asked her, and she came back and she said, For her, wisdom was always an act of love. Thank you very much.